Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my underrated game series, and today we're going to be talking all about the NES. Welcome back to my underrated game series. So this is, I think, the third in the series. Um, we're going to start talking about some more NES games. Some of the ones that are in my collection, some of my favorites. And uh, we're just going to go over them just a little bit. Um, in 1998, Konami released a neighborhood favorite uh, when I was growing up, Jackal. Such a great game. The player was great. Um, none of us had actually experienced the, uh, the arcade at all, but again, it was just uh, a really great game. Not a, like a few people talk about Jackal, but I just don't think that it gets any of the recognition that it deserves. Next up is Legendary Wings, released on the NES 1988 by Capcom. Uh, again, this is another arcade game that I never saw the arcade, uh, but I remember like taking a chance on this game and just discovering a really good shmup. Um, I had just beaten Life Force for the billionth time, and I wanted something new, and Legendary Wings uh, served it up. They they gave me something new, they gave me something different, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so, next up, in 1987, uh, Broad Board or something like that, uh, they, they released Load Runner. Load Runner was another just quirky adventure game, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I loved being able to like uh, dig holes and put enemies in the holes and stuff like that, and, and run around and grab the treasure. And I never really played this game to really beat it. I just played it to enjoy it, if that makes any sense at all. Next up is a game that almost... Never heard anyone really talk about it. Uh, Low G Man. Uh, it's released on the NES in 1990 uh, by Taxan, T A X A N, I believe. Um, this game, you can just do these hugely enormous jumps, lots of platforming, a um, little bit of like trying to figure out how to how to jump, where to jump, where to land. Um, this game I love a lot, and uh, unfortunately my copy of it broke and I had to repair one of the traces on it, but thankfully I was able to get it done um, using a little bit of K&R wire and soldering, uh, re-soldering over it and you know, repairing the trace, but it's honestly a really good game, and uh, if you can pick it up for cheap, try it out, or, or you know, find some way of trying the game out renting it, or uh, downloading a ROM, or anything like that. Uh, next up we have Metal Mech on the NES 1991 by Jelco. Metal Mech was an interesting game. It was um, it was a lot like, it had a lot of the same feeling as Blaster Master. And back then I just didn't want to wait for the next Blaster Master to come out. I just wanted more of that experience, and Metal Mech came very, very close to um, really good game, but, uh, you know, and again, it shouldn't be really that expensive, but, you know, just, just try it out, who knows. And lastly, we're going to bring up Road Blaster in the NES 1990 by Mindscape. This game I actually did play in the arcade, loved it a lot, and uh, just the big sit-down arcade, and then when it came out on home console, I was so excited, and... Uh, on, the NES, on the NES, it did not disappoint. I was very happy with everything and, and how it all pulled together. I, I understood the limitations of the NES back then, and I was, uh, I was okay with it. I was okay with how the game came out and how everything pulled together. Um, it's another game that I would highly suggest. It's a retro car combat style. Um, a little bit like Spy Hunter, but it's very, very good game. 
Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.